Alrighty everyone, so before we start this video, I want to show you what I use, my build kit, like stuff you need to order from Amazon, the hardware store before you kind of get started. This will make life easy. So here we go. Uh, number one, <laughs> it's a big purchase, but 3D printer, man. You don't need a big one. You need a little one to make your parts. This is an Ender 3 S1 Pro. I love it. And I don't know what I would do without it. I'm honestly, I'm kind of surprised I waited so long to get one. Hot glue gun. I've had this hot glue gun for like 30 years. I don't know. Cheap hot glue gun works. Uh, definitely recommend that. You're gonna want a couple bolt kits. Now I got this off Amazon. I have two of these. I have an M2 kit. I also have an M3 kit. That's I just kind of have in my drawer here. But M2 will work for like all your camera stuff, your DJI, your little screws. M3 is a lot of your motor and hardware kits. A lot of the other screws on this plane are M3 stuff, so it's just nice to have. Uh, servo extensions, I bought a kit, and you're gonna see the link in the video. Uh, the same kit I bought, absolutely love. Uh, makes life easy, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, servo tester, this is the one that I use. A Dremel drill, drill bits, all that good stuff. Uh, another thing is heat shrink. Uh, link for this too as well. Three to one, that's kind of big. This will last forever. One thing that I would recommend not buying, this is um, this is a, I think they call it a JS, let's see what they call it. I don't remember. This is a 2.54 UART cable servo maker kit. I thought I'd use it, but I don't. So I really don't recommend that. Ah, uh, and then of course, you know, just sorted screwdrivers and stuff, and then a good soldering iron. This is the one that I got. I love it. I'm glad I went with it and not a cheap one. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then of course, all your other building supplies. But I highly recommend getting this stuff. It's going to make life easy. And then you can just start adding to your list of stuff that you keep on hand. It just makes life easier for building this. So, on to the video. Okay guys, let's take a look at this dolphin and I'll show you some of the modifications. Uh, this one being the most important is this rear motor mount. Now, the original motor mount looked like something like this. Uh, what you had is you had this piece right here and this piece was just glued against the foam. It's just, it's just a piece of foam, actually it goes like this because this right here is where your uh, cabling goes through which would be that little guy right there. And this was just glued on there, and it was like the most minimal amount of glue on the planet. And then uh, this was bolted to the back of the motor, and then it's used four little screws that barely even hit the wood to hold it all together. It was janky. So I went online and I found a motor mount, and this is what it looks like. now. This was just one of my test prints. That's why it's not completely solid. Um, even though I bet you that it would work like this. Um, this right here goes in, and what I did is I used E6000 glue and smeared some glue on it, stuck it in, and because there's that little, there is that little channel right there, is that that, that goes inside of there and this kind of just locks it into the plane. Like it sits in there, it's locked, it's not twisting or anything else. I let that set up for a day, and then I printed this little X mount, this little motor mount right here. And then the motor screws to the X mount, and then the X mount screws to this motor mount right here. And this should be number one, because mine broke on the second landing. Absolute junk. Junk, 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 junk. So. Now that's done and gone through, um, the other thing that I did that was important is I run this ZOHD lithium ion pack. This is a 5,000 milliamp battery. This thing's awesome. I used it on my swordfish. Long flying times. I wanted to use it on this because I have a couple of them. But to mount this thing on the tray and to mount it to where even if I had it all the way to the focus. Even if I had it mounted all the way in the back, 
I had to put a considerable amount of weight, and I mean quite a bit of weight, to get this thing to balance on the CG. So, what I did is I took a soldering iron, and you want to use a junky one, and I mean a junky one, because you're it's going to get covered in foam goo, and I went in here and I just, you know, and just melted this, whatever it does, away. Put that back, and I elongated, made this bigger, so now I can take my battery pack, and slide it in there, and voila. But you're wondering, Jeff, how do you strap it down? And that's what this piece right here comes in. This is foam. This is the foam package from uh, what it was shipped in. Highly recommend saving this. I got a ton of this stuff. Cuts easy. This thing doesn't weigh anything at all. But I just kind of cut it the shape of a battery. And what I do is I stick it right in here. Well, I'll show you. Hang on. And so I just snug this piece of foam down. And this keeps this battery. It's a snug fit in here. But this just keeps it from wanting to shoot forward. I guess if I was to hit the brakes, I don't know, have a rough, it'd be if I had a rough landing and this comes flying forward and it's connected to this and I don't know, just being careful, that's all. So that was the big thing that I had to do and um, it, I'm so glad that I did because it, it just makes the plane bounce perfect and I don't need any extra weight, keeps it light. Moving to the front here, um, I was very lucky and would like to thank Bonafide Pirate. He shared this little VTX tray uh, right here. And this VTX tray just, it sits in, I'll show you the back. You have to cut out the foam, but this thing sits right in there, uh, follows the line of the, of the uh, aircraft. And he's got a walk snail kit, and I just use this little um, 3D printed uh, VTX holder and this is made from TPU, but this has the bolt patterns as well So it bolted right down to it or screwed down to it and Works fantastic and again, there'll be links in the description for all of this. Uh, this is a chopstick so um, You know like a skewer that you'd use on the Barbie and uh, I just cut it stuck it in there and I just took a permanent marker and colored it black which seemed to work really well uh, up front here uh, this is a just a servo that I have this is a nice like 250 degree servo so it goes almost all the way around of course I got this sweet little I 3d printed this um, TPU is a little a little uh, cap for it, a little cover while I'm transporting it just sitting there uh, I got this from another gentleman, and this is actually designed to sit in the original spot where this was. It's not, and uh, but what I did is I just took it and I just drilled it from the bottom, and just got a long screw and screwed it down onto there. You know, I just drilled it just big enough to where I had to press it on there and put the screw on, and it's good to go. And as you can see right here, it's just hot glued right there and hot glued on the top. Nothing crazy, and it's adjustable too, so you can, if you can fine tune it for your artificial horizon. Uh, in here is just the same old, same old. As you can see, I use servo extensions for all my wiring, uh, especially for my DJI stuff. This is nice for when I'm bench testing. So this one that's labeled with the red electrical tape, if I unplug this, it shuts the power off to this. So that way I can have this thing hooked up on the battery, fiddling with it, I gotta worry about the, the VTX overheating and then I plug it back in and I'm done. Um, also, this is where I plug in. This is actually for a, a pan system in case, or this is a tilt system, excuse me, because if I wanna tilt, uh, add another servo and have tilt, I just have it already there. Uh, the other lead is for um, uh, the actual, the uh, panning of the camera. And so that's what I do. And I think it works out fantastic. I do take electrical tape, or not electrical tape. I use, this is all Walmart stuff. This is your HD clear. And I actually keep this taped because I don't trust the magnets, not one bit. Um, as you can see, I just run everything up through here. Uh, as I said earlier, I had to 
elongate this and I had to make a channel in there so that, that wiring would be able to go through to uh, work out. Uh, a couple of little odds and ends. We'll put the, uh, let's go ahead and put the top on it. Um, I 3D printed this little air intake scoop. Number one, it looks awesome. But it gets some air into there, kind of cool that battery down. I 3D printed this little, this little latch locker mechanism. And I'll have a link for that. That thing works pretty sweet. All I did is I took a screw. I just took a screw. I drilled the hole out so that way this thing would just spin on the screw. And then I just put some hot glue in there and then ran the screw in, let it harden up. Done. Uh, same thing for the for the back here as well. I just don't trust the magnets. Uh, this one sits nice and firm. That's why I don't have this little this in the 3D file. You'll see it's this piece and it's and it's that piece. Um, but back here it fits nice and snug, so I don't need the other piece. And again, another vent scoop. Get air in. Uh, while we're back here, I. Uh, I relocated my flight controller. It wasn't perfectly pointed. Let's see if I get behind here. It wasn't perfectly, let's get this thing level so at least it looks decent. Um, it wasn't pointed perfectly straight. It's actually crooked. Uh, so I relocated it. I relocated the uh, USB connect, the data link, the GPS. The GPS sit in front of the wing screw. Um, I don't care, I don't take the wings off. This little gizmo right here is just holding down all my wires that's the only reason I have it and of course you can see where I had to again uh, I had to trench that out for my wiring to go past the battery ELRS system on here this is the uh, I have a couple I can tell you my best this is actually going in something else this is the beta FPV this is the super D this thing is the, sh the shiznit super long range but this thing's just flying around. This has got the uh, Radio Master ELRS diversity antenna, and I just popped, just took a screwdriver and just went, bloom, bloom, ran it in there, and it fits. A little dab of hot glue on the antennas to hold everything down. Piece of cake, man. Piece of cake. We'll put the cover on. I'll flip it over and show you all the other goodies. Okay, bottom side. Uh, ESC hatch. It ain't gonna look like that when you get it. It's gonna look like that. This looks cheap. Someone made this. I was like, I like it. It's got some louvering action to it. So I thought it'd be cool. It's plastic. I don't know. Uh, these things are sweet. These are uh, little servo horn covers. Uh, these are great too if you land on the street. Cause I, like, I usually land on the street. Um, you know, it can rub against this. Keeps the wing tips off the off the street and you know what I think we've come to the end uh, again you can see that 3d mount you can see how the wire just goes into there and it's just money man it's money so there you guys have it this is my dolphin um, I'm probably gonna add a couple things later on definitely put some LEDs on it uh, kind of light it up in the sky but so far I am loving it so Stay tuned, next video is gonna be my iNav setup. Some very important stuff, especially for auto launch. You do not wanna miss this video. Definitely watch it. The auto launch is the biggest thing that will help you out um, so the thing doesn't fly nose first into the ground. So thanks again for watching my video. If you like it, like it. If you don't, I'm sorry. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.